Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Ian Webb. Uh, I'm a vicar in the Dromfield with Homesfield team and also uh, proud to be a chaplain to uh, the local air cadets here in Dromfield. Um, welcome to this uh, remembrance service on what is Armistice Day here on the 11th of the 11th. And in this uh, service, uh, we will uh, have a reflection on what we believe remembrance is really about. We will have some readings, poetry, there'll be prayers, and there'll be um, some laying of wreaths. And of course, we will hear the role of honour, those who have died, who were connected with this school. And of course, we will have the last post and the two minute silence and the Ravalli. And the two minute silence is a chance for you to reflect and uh, remember people you may know, or indeed to remember those who you didn't know, but would like to pay homage to. So just by way of introduction, have you heard of the phrase, I'm sure you have, lest we forget, lest we forget. It's the, the, the phrase that uh, the Royal British Legion used for their poppy appeal. And um, I think the word lest means that we're really better, uh, we better not forget or something awful will happen, lest we forget or something awful will happen. What my observation is that we're really great at remembering yearly rituals and festivals, but really bad at remembering why we do them and the meaning behind them. Take uh, bonfire night last week. No doubt many of you were involved with bonfires, fireworks, sparklers and parties and all the rest of it. But the real meaning, the thwarting of a Catholic assassination attempt on a Protestant king, I'm sure that's remembered less and less. Or Halloween a little earlier, the streets of Dromfield looked to me like an episode of The Walking Dead. But the original meaning of celebrating the great saints, the people in our lives who've been an inspiration of a good and godly life. Well, I'll let you decide whether we remember that on Halloween. Christmas approaches, of course, seems to get bigger and earlier every year. But do we remember what it's really all about? I belong to a faith tradition, Christianity, that majors on remembering. And a central feature of many church services is the frequent remembering or recalling of one particular night. Jesus took bread and wine and initiated a new ritual, a new festival, Holy Communion, and said, do this to remember me. And the heart of that ritual was all about love. But us Christians are just as bad at remembering the why. Why do we do it? We focus on making sure we go to the ritual and the celebration, but we don't remember that it's all about love. Remembrance Day of all rituals is surely the one where we ought to be better at remembering. Remembering the why. What is the why of this day? At 11 a.m. On the 11th of November 1918, the guns fell silent and peace echoed in the air for the first time in over four years after the end of the first ever truly global conflict. They called it the war to end all wars. So they worked hard to keep the peace. They gathered as we do on the 11th of November and said, lest we forget. But just over 20 years later, the world was once more plunged into a terrifying global and catastrophic war. These two wars claimed the most appallingly huge death toll. And therefore all around the country and in other countries, in every town and village, monuments were put up to stand as a reminder, lest we forget. For humanity's sake, never again. So we gather here today to remember that many people died so that we might have freedom. Your generations and mine will not have known the heroes of the world wars. Very few of you will have known those who fought and survived those conflicts. You may not remember them, but lest we forget. We gather here today because we remember and honour those who have died in defending this nation or been injured in more recent conflicts. 
and those of other nations such as Ukraine and our friends here who have faced conflict today. You may not know them, but lest we forget. We do not remember because it is our patriotic duty to do so. We do not remember because society tells us to do so. We do not remember because we want to glorify war or the military. We remember because forgetting will cost us everything. We remember because people are more precious than borders. We remember because it is our sacred duty to remember and to help the generations after us to do the same. Pupils of Dromfield Henry Fanshawe School, the torch be yours to hold it high, lest we forget. I'd like to invite my colleague Elliot to just lead us in some short prayers. Feel free to bow your heads or, or close your eyes if that is helpful for you. Let us pray. We pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war. Each one remembered and known to God. For those who loved them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family and friends and all who pray for their safe return. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. In Flanders Fields by John McRae. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the folk. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow. Flanders fields. Roll of Honour. 1914 to 1918. J. Bagley, P. Barclough, H. Brakes, J. S. Stewart, J. Froggart, W. Gray, D. Hall, C. Jackson, H. Lowcock, F. McGrath, F. Marderson, W. Marsden, L. Newton, D. H. Prosser, L Rhodes, F Rhodes, P Salmon, and R Smallbones. The Roll of Honour 1939 to 1945. A Bennett, H Biggin, 
JK Danes, LW Derrick, BT Glossop, PC Granger, RE Gregory, JC Hick, WC Jackson, R Johnson, CH Lowcock, WC Lowcock, E Murfin, JC Rowe, DN Riles, KFA Seals, W Sheldon, JM Simpson, N Slack, and W Slater. So in a few moments, uh, we're going to have uh, the two minute silence. And um, when I was uh, about your age, the uh, first person that came into my head uh, in, the in the two minute silence was my grandfather who fought uh, in the Second World War in Italy. Uh, you may not know anyone, uh, but if you do, perhaps bring them to mind. And also just think about um, those who are currently serving in our armed forces. And also perhaps think about those who work for peace around the world. Uh, and remember, remember those who have died for your sake, for your freedom. Just uh, going to read to you uh, this poem. Perhaps if you've got sight of a, a poppy, uh, perhaps uh, you can see my poppy or somebody else's poppy. Perhaps you just look at that as I read this to you. For any man whose final bed was some foreign field where he shot dead, rested his head on cold hard ground till found brought home to rest. These flowers are for you. For any mother who raised her eyes from the kitchen sink to her house's drive, as soldiers marched down to a door, knocked and said, your John's no more on this earth. These flowers are for you. For any father who's carried his son from birth on requested piggybacks at first, then one day from a hearse to lower him to a grave, tears flowing, his heart knowing, if he could just one man please save, these flowers are for you. For any girl who lost abroad, the young father she so adored, once looked up with widened eyes, laughed as he tossed her in his arms towards the skies, in whose heaven now he lies, while her heart aches and breaks for him. These flowers are for you. For all who gather to salute the fallen, the loved, the lost, whose voices say as one, we will remember them at the going down of the sun and in the morning. Those whom these dewdrops, this crisp autumn air shall never know, while poppies grow and tears flow, these flowers are for you. I'm going to read some words now, and at the end of them I will say, we will remember them, and I invite you to repeat after me those words, we will remember them. So they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. <laughs> Thank you. 
So thank you for taking part in this uh, act of remembrance on this Armistice Day. Um, just to remind you that on Sunday, of course, there will be uh, acts of remembrance taking place uh, across uh, the, across the country. And of course, here in Dromfield, we'll be remembering as well. So do come along to the services uh, and look online for details. Thank you for all that have taken part to make this uh, happen today. Uh, and for the technology and for all the students uh, and all the staff. So thank you uh, for taking part. So I'd just like to offer you all a final blessing. So may God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us all and God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.